I'm gonna try to survive 100 days in this Minecraft zombie apocalypse. And the twist is, I'm trapped in huge glass spheres floating in the sky. In each sphere, there's tons of custom buildings, dangerous new challenges to face, and loads of awesome loot to discover to help me fend off the horde. I intend to build a huge zombie proof base, and I'll be crafting tons of awesome weapons to make me as powerful as possible when facing off against the dead. Also, I'm not alone, there are other survivors lurking in the shadows, and they aren't all as friendly as I am. Will I be able to survive 100 days? in this Minecraft zombie apocalypse? Let's find out. Day 1. I open my eyes to see a huge glass wall rising up above me through the sky. Look at this. It's massive. It wasn't long before I heard the growling of the dead coming from the cave below me. They'd be coming for me soon. I hurried over to the eucalyptus tree and punched it down. Then, as I was harvesting the logs, I heard footsteps approaching me from behind. Whoa, hello. As I was fighting it off, Identifog rolled in. The sounds of the dead echoed across the landscape. More and more of the dead were beginning to emerge from the shadows. I made a run for it. I needed shelter, and fast. I ran until I came across this. Oh, it looks like a gas station. I wonder what's down that road. I needed to take refuge inside the gas station. Ah, huh, there's quite a few of them out there. I made a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. It looks like I'm going to be here all night. Ah, huh, hello. You're kind of cool. I think I'll call you Wally. Wally the Alpaca. In the staff room in the back, there was a chest, in which there was a wrench and some canned food. On the morning of day two, the horde looked like it had dispersed, so I headed outside. Oh, never mind. That's a little too many. Since I was trapped, I decided to explore the rest of the building. In the back, there was a small cafe. In the fridge, there were some muffins and ice cream. In the bathroom, there was nothing, except what you'd expect to find in the bathroom. I broke through the floorboards of the gas station and collected some cobblestone. Then I crafted myself some stone tools. It really doesn't look too nice out there. I didn't have any coal, so I was forced to continue mining in the pitch black darkness. It wasn't long before I broke into a cave. Oh, okay, I'm not alone down here. Let's take care of you. Right, they do quite a lot of damage. On the wall of the cave, I found some lignite, which works like coal, so I could finally craft torches and see what was around me. I discovered some copper and some iron ore, so I mined it all up and headed back up to the surface. That night, I went outside to thin the horde with my wrench, but I quickly got overwhelmed and hurried back inside. Day 3, I began smelting my iron ore. Then, for extra protection against the hordes, I crafted an iron chest plate as well as an iron axe. When I went outside, there were far too many of the dead for me to handle, so I lured them over towards a pool of lava. Come on, come on, into the pit. Okay, that didn't work. I continued chopping down trees while being pursued by the dead, until somehow that evening, I managed to lose the horde following me. It was eerily quiet but I decided it was a perfect opportunity to see what was down the road. I wandered through the glass tunnel until it opened up into another huge glass sphere. This time, the contents were different. There were tall fir trees as well as a farmhouse. I cautiously made my way inside. Ah, oh, this is so creepy. There's bodies all over the place. I headed for the kitchen and raided the fridge for all its supplies. There was a chest in the kitchen in which there was a double barrel shotgun. Ah, oh, this will really help. I've got to be careful though. There aren't many cartridges. I should only use it when I'm in trouble. That night, I fought off the dead for a while, but there were too many appearing out of the darkness, so I retreated back inside and held out there for the night. It got to a point though, where I didn't feel safe at all with all the growling going on, so I made a break for it back to the gas station. As I was running, I accidentally fired the shotgun. Oh god, whoops. I hurried back to the gas station, then waited out the rest of the night. On the morning of day 4, it was silent. I determined this would be the perfect time to begin crafting myself a smeltery so that I could begin making amazing tools and weapons to fight off the horde and begin building my base. Firstly, I needed sand, gravel and clay, so I made my way over to a pool of water, crafted a shovel and began excavating all the clay and gravel I could find. Then I ventured over to the farm. I was running out of canned food. I was going to need to find a sustainable source of food soon, or I'd starve to death. I planted a handful of seeds, then I proceeded towards the barn to investigate. In the barn, there were some cows, some hay, and there were some zombies. While exploring the fir forest, I came across this. Ah, wolves! I wonder if I can tame you guys. Well, I think I need some bones. Wait a second, I think I have an idea. After robbing the graveyard, I headed back over to the wolves with the bones, and it worked. I managed to tame them. Hey, whoa, 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 stop. Hey, stop killing each other. Okay, well, I guess I'll just let the strongest win. I fed my surviving dog with some raw pheasant to heal him back up. Then we set off back home towards the gas station. Get him, boy. Yeah, well done. I patched up the hole I made earlier. Then I headed home. A large horde of the dead chased me inside the gas station. Then this happened. No! Ah! Oh. 
What? Well, it looks like it's just you and me, Wally. Day 5. I shoveled up lots of sand. I combined the sand with gravel and clay to make grout. Then I smelted the grout to make seared bricks for my smeltery. I began constructing the smeltery. That evening, I heard glass break behind me. Ah, oh dear. Maybe the gas station isn't as safe as I thought. Suddenly, I heard glass breaking. The dead had broken into the cafe. They flooded inside and overwhelmed me. I was forced to take out my shotgun and I opened fire. I quickly blocked off the windows in the cafe. The gas station was secure, for now. The following day on day 6, I ventured outside and bucketed some lava to power the smeltery. For the rest of the day, I made my way through the surface caves and collected coal and iron, which are materials you need to make steel. And steel is a fantastic material to make tools out of. The first tool I wanted to make was a hammer, which works like a pickaxe, but way better. So on day 7, I got to work and forged one out of steel. Day 8, I ventured outside and picked wild shrubs off the ground to get an assortment of seeds, as my food supply was running a little low. Another great thing about hammers are that you can use them as a weapon. Oh yeah. I also discovered floor cow. I headed over to the farm and planted all of the seeds I gathered. Then I did some research into how to make food. It turns out making bread is way harder than putting together three wheat, which made making a sustainable food source way harder. As the sun began to set, I started to hear distant growling coming from the fog, and this popped up. A blood moon was coming, which meant there would be hundreds and hundreds of the dead on me very soon. I rushed back towards the gas station as fast as I could, but I didn't get there in time. The dead were in between me and the gas station. Oh god, oh god, oh god. This isn't good. Ah! No, no, no! Please, no! Oh no, okay, I'm cut off. Right, uh, I've got an idea. Oh my god, that's a lot of zombies. Jeez. As soon as they were all around the base pillar I was on, I jumped. Here we go. Run, run, run! Whoa! Okay, let's shut the door. On day 9, I managed to swerve around the horde and journeyed over to the farm. I was down to my last few cans, and if I didn't figure out my food situation soon, I die of hunger. I managed to survive off apples from the farm's apple trees for the time being, and as I was picking up apples, I came across something very interesting. Wooden crates, which were full of useful loot, but I would need a crowbar to open them, so until then, I'd have to wait. On that afternoon, I decided it was time to begin building my base, and I had an awesome idea of what I was going to build. I just needed tons and tons of marble to make it, so I jumped down the ravine, which, in hindsight, was a little risky, and I set out on my hunt for marble. A huge horde of the dead was waiting for me in the cave system beneath. Ah, uh, okay, this is not the place to be. And it forced me to escape back to the surface. However, I got what I came for, tons and tons of marble. I ran back to the gas station and crafted a chisel to give the marble a pattern. There were a lot of patterns to choose from, but in the end, I went with this interconnected zigzag one. Then, I began constructing the outer shell of my base. I started with a 2x2 two two beam. I really liked how the zigzag pattern connected together. It looked kinda cool. That evening, with the sounds of the dead radiating from outside the windows, I looked into the easiest way I could possibly make bread. And it turns out, there's a far more simple way to make it, using this machine called a manufactory. But for now, I was going to need to make it manually, or I'd start. I needed some water, so I had to risk getting eaten real quick. I rushed out and bucketed some from the nearest lake, then I hurried back inside. Then, using a set of complicated steps and cooking utensils, I was able to bake myself my first loaves of bread. The following morning on day 10, I went back outside and continued construction of the perimeter shell. The design I was going for was a huge protective pyramid shell, made out of chiseled marble. It was going to look awesome, and would have the practical side of keeping out the dead too. That night, I quickly realised my wrench just wasn't strong enough to fight off the zombies. I was going to need a new weapon, and fast. So on day 11, I set out along the road, in the other direction, to see where it went. When the tunnel opened up into the huge glass sphere, I was met by a cherry tree forest, and in the misty distance, I could make out a Japanese temple. I made my way through the trees towards the building. It was then that the fog rolled in. And with the fog, I could hear a horde of the dead approaching fast. Hold on. Oh, that's cool. This water gives you regeneration. I determined it'd be wise to seek refuge inside the huge temple, so I ventured inside. I made my way up the spiral staircase, and at the top, I found this. Whoa, look at this. Ah, oh, perfect. I needed a weapon. I ran around the hot springs and took care of all the dead in my way. Before I left the sphere, I collected some dragon fruit from a nearby tree, then I fled the area back towards the gas station. Day 12, I spent the day mining with my new hammer, gathering ores and more marble for the base. It was on that mission that I found... Diamonds! Yes, fantastic! When I returned back to the gas station, I offloaded the ores I'd found into the smeltery. Hey Wally, check it out. I found diamonds. 
That evening, I crafted a heat generator using the new ores I'd found, which I could use to power a manufactory, which, if you remember, I can use to make bread way easier. And there, after chucking some coal into the generator, there we go, the Breadinator 9000 was born. It was brilliant, and way more simple than that whole process with the cooking tools. Day 13, I realised I was completely trapped in the gas station. There were too many dead outside blocking the doors, so I came up with a plan. I'd need some kind of trap to lure the zombies into to take them out. I crafted some redstone powered spikes, then I dug a pit right by the front door. After placing down the spikes and activating them with a few redstone torches, I opened the door. And there you go, all of the dead fell into the pit and died. Next, I added a few trap doors, so I could walk over the pit and actually go in and out. Through the evening and the night, I continued construction of the pyramid. Then, when I ran out of marble, I took a bit of a risk to get down. Whoa! I went down the mine and collected more marble, chiseled it, then got right back to it. Over the course of the next few days, I repeated this cycle again and again, until on day 20, the outer shell of the pyramid was finished. And wow, when it was done, it was really something. It was pretty cool. It was, however, very dark inside, so I went around placing torches. It was absolutely full of the dead, so I did my best to clear it out. It was a real challenge. On day 21, I began placing beams that connected the currently floating pyramid to the ground. In the afternoon, I caught sight of this. Ah, this bridge has been blown out. Whoa, what is that? I'll have to find a way to get around there sometime. The unused bridge was made of quartz, which was an incredibly useful material when it comes to forging sharper weapons, and I needed it to craft stairs. Hey Floor Cow, how you doing buddy? It was on day 22 that I began laying down the quartz stairs I'd crafted. I was going to use them to get up to the main entrance of the pyramid. This would stop the dead from all flooding in in the long run. After laying it all down and taking out a few of the dead that were trying to eat me, I had finished the entrance. Not bad, not bad. Day 23, a thunderstorm had rolled in, and with that, the sounds of the dead echoed through my sphere. Before I could continue work on my base, I had to clear them out the best I could. Since I was outside fighting the dead, I decided to head over to the Japanese looking sphere to cut down some cherry trees to get some saplings. I thought it would look awesome if I placed the saplings in my pyramid. Unfortunately though, I got overrun by the dead, and even worse, I had run out of food, so I wasn't regenning hearts. I needed to get back home to get some bread, and fast. By the skin of my teeth, I managed to get back home, but I realised something terrible. I was completely out of wheat, which meant no bread. All I had were a few dragon fruits, and that was it. I ate the little food I had, then realised I needed to get some hay from the farm. I broke the wall to get out, and the horde bladded in. I managed to circle around the dead, then I made a break for it. I rushed over to the farm. Unfortunately, the crops I'd planted simply weren't growing quickly at all. I just wasn't going to be able to rely on them. But luckily, the apples on the trees had regrown, and there was plenty of hay in the barn. Night fell, and the dead were beginning to emerge from the shadows, so I quickly hurried back to the pyramid. Day 24, I began changing the landscape within my pyramid to a flat grassland full of cherry trees, and to do that, I would need to remove the huge road in the middle. Then I began placing dirt to level out the ground. Now that I'd leveled out the ground, it was really dark in the pyramid, so I had to run around and place loads of torches. Day 25, I went out and dug up lots of sand, which I would need if I was going to complete the next part of my construction. I began building a huge sky bridge up through the entrance into the pyramid. This would do a few things. It would act as a second floor and a buffer between me and the zombies, as any zombies that enter the pyramid would die falling to the ground floor, and it would look really cool. At first, it was very simple. It was just a bridge between two entrances, but I had much greater plans for the future. Day 26, I finished flattening out the terrain. This is looking a lot better. I did have a major problem though. Even though I'd been lighting up the pyramid loads, there were still hordes of zombies to worry about. Hey Mr. Flocow. Wait, no, Mr. Flocow, no! I didn't really want a gas station in the centre of my base, and since my smeltery was already inside it, I thought it'd be best to tear down the old gas station and construct a new building around the smeltery. It was on the evening of day 27, I saw this message. Oh no, oh no, not another blood moon, oh god. It was that night, I made a rather large mistake. I thought it would be a good idea to head outside, but boy was I wrong. Oh my lord. Look how many there are, that's insane. I was going to need to find a way to get rid of this massive horde as soon as possible. This was way too many for me to kill on my own. I managed to craft a fan and I headed up to the second floor, then let it rip. Hey, there we go. Awesome. If only I could use that on the horde down there. Oh my lord, that's a lot of zombies. It was then I had a brilliant idea to get rid of them. What if I could use the fan, but this time point the fan upwards? Come on, come on. Yes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. I trained the horde back through the fan again and again until most of them were wiped out. Then I picked off the remaining zombies with my katana. It was off this idea of using fans vertically that I got the next cool idea. 
What if I could use the fans to push me from floor to floor? It was when I was building that that I did something very stupid. I wonder if I can make it to the fan. Ah! Oh my! That was way too risky. I nearly died. What the heck? Why did they do that? Hey Wally, check it out. It's going somewhere, isn't it? It's not too bad. I gave the fan method its first test run. There we go. And he did like that, but, you know, a little bit more controlled. While I was making the Skybridge circular, I ran into this guy. Whoa. <laughs> hey there. See you later. That night, I headed over to the Cherry Tree Forest. I really wanted a hot springs lake in the center of my pyramid, so I grabbed a few buckets and then ventured home. Dug up a pit and filled it with hot spring water, and there, I had a spring water lake. The lake, as well as looking awesome, had a practical purpose, as when I fought off the dead, if I got really low, I could just jump in the lake and heal up. Day 29, when adding another part to the sky bridge, this happened. Ah! No, no, no! Oh my! Half a heart! I really need to do something about the fall damage, god. It was on day 30 that I made my working fan elevator. I managed to make it so the settings pushed me exactly the right amount of blocks to the sky bridge. Day 31, I began constructing my base of operations, the top floor. This is where I would put most of my chests and machinery. In order to get up and down there, I made a hole in the center for me to drop down, as well as a fan on pull settings to beam me up. Okay, that's the last time I'm nearly gonna kill myself with a fan. I need to craft something right now. So craft something is what I did. On day 31, I did some research into ways I could stop fall damage. And it turns out, I can make some electric boots called free runners, which when charged up will absorb all fall damage for you. To make them, I first had to craft a metallurgic infuser, then I craft all the parts I would need, then boom, I was done. I had free runner boots. So that they would work, I needed to charge them up with electricity. So I made a charge pad, connected the heat generator, and there we go, it worked. Please work, please work. Yes, it works. The following day on day 32, I went exploring to see if I could find a way around to that huge building I seen in the distance earlier. I came across this, an oasis full of palm trees and an old pyramid structure. There are an awful lot of zombies coming out of that pyramid. That's not too good. What is this stuff? Whoa, oh no, I'm sinking. It's quicksand. I wonder if I can use that. I decided to grab a few buckets of quicksand. Okay, <laughs> there's a few too many for me to handle. No way that worked. Oh, they're coming through the roof. Let's block that off. I then cautiously began my journey down the winding stairs into the dungeon. It was eerily quiet. All I could hear was the growling of the dead further down the tunnel. Looks like an old abandoned tomb. I guess tons of zombies must have wandered down here and got stuck. Ah, there's a bunch of chests down there. Hmm, I'm gonna need to get those. I placed a bucket of quicksand and managed to trap the majority of the zombies. I jumped down, but as I went for the chest, the zombies were beginning to get loose. Okay, that's way too many. Oh god, this isn't good. Build, build, build! Why is it not working? Oh, no! Oh, no, 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 no! Run, run, run! Luckily, I narrowly managed to water bucket my way out. I jumped back down after I'd healed up and took out all the zombies which had freed themselves. I then had enough space to start looting the chests. In the chests, I found all sorts of incredible loot, such as diamonds, rare ingots, bones, and gunpowder. I water bucketed up, then made my way out the tomb. When I got to the top, I removed the quicksand so I could make my way out, then... Oh my god! I'm trapped! Oh no no no! Uh, you know what? Uh, out through the wall. I had definitely overstayed my welcome in the Oasis, so I made my way home. Ah! Oh my god, that was close. On the morning of day 34, I had made it back to the pyramid. I had taken the chest from the tomb back home with me. I mean, why not? It's free storage. Now, I wanted to make use of the cherry tree forest down the road. And to do that, I need to make a powerful lumber axe. I can chop down an entire tree in one swing. So I began smelting. I made the main axe head out of a material called Electrum. I put a diamond on it for added strength, as well as redstone to make it even faster. Then I ventured outside to head over to the forest when this happened. What was that? What the heck? My axe is glowing. Ah, it must be that Electrum stuff. Whoa, okay, that's cool. Whenever I hit a zombie with it, it gives me a speed boost. When I began chopping down the trees, I discovered something even more crazy. The axe would give me haste every time I mined a block, which meant if I could chain together a few trees, I could chop them down really, really fast. You know what? I want these lanterns. They look really cool. So I went round and grabbed a few of them to take them back home. When I returned to the pyramid, I planted all the cherry tree saplings, then I placed down all of the lanterns. Day 35, I got to work forging a brand new weapon. I thought that if I made a throwing star made out of the new ingots I found at the tomb, with a bit of electrum added on top, it would give me the shocking effect, which would be awesome. So that's what I did, and the Wally star was born. Whoa, okay, that's awesome. 
If I hit a zombie with one of these, I can run really fast. Damn. On day 36, I had a brilliant new idea. I didn't need two sets of fans to get me up and down the base. All I had to do was put one fan right in the middle below the hot spring water lake. I moved all the fans I wouldn't be using anymore to magnify the new system. And wow, it really worked. Almost too well. I also went to the farm quickly and grabbed some wheat so I could start a cow farm. As I really needed leather to make a backpack and item frames for my chest. That day, I moved all the items upstairs. I even crafted some diamond chests, which I turned into cool looking crystal chests, which you could look through and see the contents of. It turns out I didn't actually need leather, as you can make really cool looking golden item frames using nuggets and obsidian. So I got to work making those instead. And wow, they look really cool. I spent day 37 taking out the dead with my new Wally Star, so that I could level it up. Once it was leveled up, I put a reinforcement on it, which meant it would never break, and I could throw as many of them as I wanted. It was on day 38, I had an awesome idea. What if I modified my hammer with an electrum plate to give it haste when it mines a block? Surely that would be really overpowered, right? And great for mining. I really wanted to test it out. But first, I decided to end my food issue once and for all. I created an electric furnace and a hopper so the flour would go right down into the furnace, which meant I had a completely automatic bread maker. <laughs> Look, Wally. Look how much bread we have. Day 39. It was then time to test out the electric hammer. And wow, it worked very, very well. This is actually crazy. Ah, oh my, that made me jump. Run, run, run. Let's block that off. With loads of ores collected, I headed back up to the surface. Day 40, I needed more electricity. I simply didn't have enough power to run my bread on 8 to 9,000. And so I thought, why don't I put some solar panels on the outside of my pyramid? I did some research into how to make them. Then I crafted the components and the electric cable. Then got to work placing them on the roof. Fantastic, they're all producing electricity. Day 41, I was feeling kind of lonely in the apocalypse, as I hadn't run into any other people yet. So I decided to make myself a companion to take on adventures. This time, I thought it'd be best I didn't get a dog, since the zombies would eat it again. So I came up with a solution. A robot. Hey, robot. How you doing? Robot, meet Wally. Wally, this is robot. That night, I managed to put enough reinforcements on my throwing star so that it would never, ever break, which was really powerful. It was that night, the night of day 41, that I decided to head out along the unexplored road in search of new areas, and hopefully, if I was lucky, other survivors. Me and Robit journeyed through the whole night until the sun rose on day 42, which is when we discovered a new area. It looked to be an abandoned town. The windows were all boarded up and destroyed, and I could hear the growling of the dead coming from inside the buildings. I cautiously proceeded through the back door of a larger building, Let's get rid of all of you. It turned out to be a basketball court. There was a chest with a few delicious snacks in it, ranging from chocolate to potato chips. One of the windows to the neighbouring building had been smashed open, so I hopped inside. It was a pub. By the bar there was a chest full of beer, as well as a few shotgun cartridges I could use for my double barrel back home. Upstairs by the pool table, there was another chest with more loot in it. Notably, this time, there was string, which was quite hard to come by in the apocalypse. Next, I ventured through the car park of what looked to be a police station that I made my way inside. In the back of the police station by the jail cell, there was a chest in which there was SWAT armor, as well as a Glock handgun and a few clips. The SWAT helmet was stronger and more durable than my iron helmet, so I put it on. I then went back outside and continued my adventure down the tunnel into the unknown. I decided to give the Glock a test fire, just to make sure it worked. Through the foggy tunnel, Robit and I emerged to find this. Whoa, look at this. I think it's a prison. This place is massive. Oh shoot, I'm sorry Robert, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, there's quite a few of them. Uh, okay, into here. Ah, hello. Right, let's take care of you. In the prison cafeteria's fridge, there was some really great food. Whoa, pizzas. Isn't it kind of weird that the best food I found in the apocalypse was at a prison? I opened the door to get outside, but the dead flooded in, so I circled around them as fast as I could and went through the door. And... Ah, I'm eating zombie. Oh god, no no no. Ah, what the? Whoa, you really hit hard. Die, 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 come on, come on. I was struggling, but I knew a secret trick for these mutant zombies. If you set them on fire when you kill them, they don't get back up. So I set it on fire with my bucket of lava, then went in for the kill. Yes, it worked. <laughs> Brilliant. The mutant zombie dropped a very cool Hulk hammer that I could use myself. Hey, help me, help me. Wait, is that a person? Ah, zombies, get away. Hey, you in there. I'm here, don't worry. Oh, thank you. Please hurry. Hey, hey, come and get me. 
All right, mate, get out, quick. Ah, thank you. We need to get out of here. Hey, this handgun. Got it. Come on, let's go. I think we've overstayed our welcome. <laughs> I think you're right. So, how come you were trapped in that jail cell? Well, I was looting the prison, and suddenly I was overrun with the dead. I had to hide somewhere. Ah, I see. I've noticed there aren't any dead over here. Why is that? This city has a huge sewer network. We managed to trap all the dead from the city down there. It's very safe up here now. Ah, right. Wait, did you say we? I mean, me? My base is just up ahead. I've got all sorts of supplies there. Uh, okay. Follow me. It's just this way. Come on, boys. I caught us another one. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hand over all your stuff. Guys, this really isn't necessary. Hand over all your stuff, and we might let you walk away from this. Okay, okay. Hold on. Hand it over. Just l let me get it for you. Psych. What? What? What the? Do that? How? He's on the roof. Get him. Get to the door now. Get up the stairs. Get to the roof. Now move, move. Quick, get up the stairs. Where did he go? He's not here. Right. I need to get out of here. Right now. This tunnel is so dark and slimy. Jeez. Wait. Slimy? I could use that. I crafted some shears and got to work extracting as much slimy vines as I could. I knew it would be incredibly important to make a weapon that I could use to take on the bandits. Eventually, I made it to the end of the tunnel and I climbed the ladder to freedom. I made sure to get out of the area right then and there. I didn't want to take any chances with the bandits. I knew they were still looking for me. I fought my way back through the prison, in the direction of home. I ran as fast as I could through the murky darkness, biting off the hordes of the dead. <laughs> hey, there we go. Burn. And eventually, after a long journey, on day 47, I made it home. Unfortunately, I brought a huge horde with me, so I had to do my best to fight it off. It was on day 48 I came to a realisation. The bandits would be back to get me, and I was vastly outnumbered. I would need to rig my base with tons of traps, and equip myself with amazing armour and weaponry, if I had any chance of fighting them off. I remembered there were wooden crates at the farm full of loot, so I crafted a crowbar. Once it was made, I rushed over to the farm, and began the crate opening. In the first two crates, I found custom farming tools, in the next lot, I found saplings, a range of seeds, and a hatchet. And then, in the final crates, I found this. Ah, a chainsaw! Whoa, well, this will help me against the bandits. Brilliant! Ah, and there we go, that's the fuel it needs. As the sun set on day 49, I rushed back home with my chainsaw in hand. <laughs> oh, this thing is perfect. Day 50, I needed to start making traps to defend against the bandits. But the thing is, I didn't want to have to stand right next to the traps when turning them on and off, so I had the genius idea of triggering the traps in range using a bow and arrow. I constructed a mechanism which changes a button pulse to a constant redstone signal. That way, I could turn traps on and off using an arrow. But to activate traps with a mechanism, I'd actually need a bow and arrow. So on day 51, that's what I did. I forged the bow limbs out of Manulan, the strongest alloy in the game, from the metals in the tomb. I used slime vines from the sewers in the city to craft the bowstring. Day 52. There we go, it works! I made myself a set of custom arrows to use against the bandits. I overloaded them with quartz to make them do a crazy amount of damage. I also added redstone to my longbow to increase the speed of my draw time. I realised my longbow had quite a long draw time, and since there were tons of bandits, I would need a weapon that could fire off tons of arrows in a short time. So I decided to make a short bow. Day 53 to 57. I spent taking out the dead and levelling up my bows. I needed to make them as powerful as possible to combat the bandits. What a shot! No way! Day 58, I had a brilliant idea. I wanted to build a grappling hook so I could get around easily and make myself more manoeuvrable. Whoa! Okay, this is cool. I also found out you could use a grappling hook to pull people to you, which might come in handy later on. What the heck? I had no idea you could do that. Whoa. Next, on day 59, I crafted the grappling hook upgrade bench, which I used to put a motor on my grappling hook. This allowed me to motor up and down once I hooked onto something. Day 60, I realised it would be really challenging to build good traps up on the level of the sky bridge, so I was going to need to make a main entrance to the pyramid to lure the bandits into, so I got to work making a big front door. I then dug trenches to the sides of the entrance and filled them with lava. Yep. I wouldn't want to fall down there. I then had the genius idea on day 61 to use signs to hold up the quicksand, which would make for a slow and quite hilarious death for anyone unfortunate enough to try to attack the base. It's looking like the quicksand works. I just need a way to push the victims in there. So on day 62, I constructed some fans and placed them to the side of the trenches. I then turned them on and gave the system a test run. With the trap working, it was time I added a long range target mechanism to it. So on day 63, I recreated the mechanism from upstairs, right next to the trap. There we go, it works. Ah, off, 
For the rest of the day, I worked on hiding the mechanism and making it look a little more presentable. Once it was all done and ready, I found out I was struggling to hit it with the short bow, which happened to be really inaccurate over long ranges. The long bow, however, was way more precise. So from that point onwards, I knew I'd use the longbow when they attacked. That night, a blood moon happened, and legions of the undead attacked the pyramid. I did what I could to hold them off, using it as a perfect opportunity to test my new trap. Come on, come on. There we go. Brilliant, it works. That night, I threw so many throwing stars that I actually started to starve to death. Wait, what the heck? Why am I taking damage? Oh, I'm starving. Day 63 to 64, I spent building a brand new smeltery building, as currently it was just the old gas station floor, and it vastly needed improving. I went for a marble and cherry wood theme, so it would blend in with the colour scheme of the surrounding pyramid. Once it was all constructed, and the crafting stations had been moved around, it was time to make it bandit proof. So I got to work designing a unique trap. I placed redstone blocks on the ceiling, then layered them with the same redstone powered spikes I had had in the gas station all that time ago. But this time, I dug fans into the floor, and hooked them all up together with redstone. Now, if a bandit walks into the smeltery, he'll get the unpleasant welcoming of a face full of spikes. And with that lethal trap installed, the smeltery was finished. Hey, floor cow. Ah, oh, at some point I'm gonna need to make myself a flamethrower. Day 66, I decided to put some fans on the sky bridge, to make them zombie proof, which worked a treat. It was on day 67, I had the cool idea, just for aesthetic reasons, to make the centre a huge column of hot spring water. It meant I had regeneration going up and down my base, and it looked really, really cool. It also had the side bonus of slowing me down just enough to not fly out of the top of the pyramid. Day 68 was flamethrower day. I got to work and crafted all the components I would need. There we go. Oh man, this thing looks awesome. Day 69, I crafted an electrolytic separator, which makes fuel for my flamethrower by splitting up water into hydrogen. I had a big problem though, the separator wasn't getting enough electricity from the solar panels to make me flamethrower fuel, which meant I needed to make something to get me more electricity. So on day 70, I did some research into wind turbines, and I made a few. As to how wind flows through them when I'm trapped inside a glass sphere, I don't know, but hey, it seemed to work. Day 71, I really wanted to try to make some serious weaponry to fight against the bandits, like mini guns, RPGs, you know, the whole lot. And if I wanted to do that, I need a whole lot of bullets. And bullets are made with gunpowder. And since there were no creepers about, I had to do some research into how to make gunpowder. It turns out the main component I would need is sand. So I went to the smeltery and forged myself a fantastic new shovel. Then, on day 72, I went outside and excavated up tons and tons of sand, which I could craft into sandstone, which after a long process, I could turn into gunpowder. Hey Wally, check it out, I'm making bombs. Day 74, I was going about things as usual when I spotted this. Hey! You, get over here! Oh, where'd he go? Looks like they found my base. There's gonna be an attack pretty soon. On the foggy evening of day 75, I decided to set out on one final expedition to find things to help me fight off the bandits. I remembered that I'd seen a huge building a while ago, so I headed in that direction. As I ran, I came across this. The zombies were getting stronger. Oh god! Okay, here we go. Whoa, that did six halves. Ah! There we go, he's down, he's down. What? He got back up. I realized without fire, the mutant zombie would keep getting back up again and again. So I quickly hurried back to the pyramid, grabbed my flamethrower, and brushed the mutant zombie head on. Burn, burn, burn. Oh, Luckily, I had a bucket of hot spring water to heal myself whenever I got too low. Without it, I probably would have died. I lured the mutant zombie down the tunnel, doing as much damage as I could, until eventually, he gave way to the flamethrower. I didn't fix my problems though, as a thunderstorm had rolled in, and with that, a huge horde of the dead was upon me. I did my best to fight them off. At one point, I had to jump into a hot spring water lake to survive. After dodging and weaving through the horde, I came across what I was looking for, the huge building. It's a hospital. Interesting. I hurried inside as quickly as I could, and shut the door behind me. Ah, there's a whole load of military equipment out front, but there's tons of the dead out there. Ah, I need to clear out the area. I ventured outside and took a stand, and after a lot of flamethrowing, I'd taken care of the horde. While I was at it, I decided to clear out the hospital's courtyard. I don't like this place. Then I made my way through the empty hallways. I used the elevator to get to the second floor, then I walked around looking at the body-filled corridors. Wow, this place is creepy. 
Next, I took a look in the rooms. In one, I found a chest which contained loads of medical supplies. Well, this should help me out if things with the bandits go south. Day 79, I exited the front of the hospital and took out a horde that had gathered up at the entrance. Once it was all clear, I had a chance to take a look at the military equipment laid out around the entrance. Damn, that sentry gun could come in handy. Luckily, I'd remembered to bring my crowbar, so I got to work opening the military crates. In the first one, I found turret AI chips, which I could use to control the sentry guns. In the second crate, I found anti-personnel landmines. And in the third crate, I found shrapnel mines. In the rest of the crates, I found some shotgun shells. Then I took the two sentry guns and set off on my way home. That night, I got intercepted by a horde of the dead, but I managed to hold them off with my flamethrower. But it was quite close. Whoa, jeez, you hurt. I'm gonna run this way. Oh my god, that's a lot of zombies. Burn, burn, burn. It's safe to say that when I got back to the base, I was relieved. The zombies were turning into a real threat out there. From days 80 to 92, I spent the entire time preparing for the coming attack, creating traps and new areas. I had a lot of mining and building to do. I spent hours and hours excavating up huge areas, and even longer collecting marble and chiseling. I wanted to make sure I had every possible advantage over the bandits when they came for me. And then, after tons of carefully thought out preparation, I was ready. The Temple of Wally was completed. It was time for the bandits to make their move. First though, on day 93, I made myself an RPG. Because come on, who doesn't want an RPG? Then, on day 94, I made myself even more maneuverable. I crafted a jetpack and placed it in the separator to fuel it up. Okay, this thing is fantastic. I should have made this sooner. With that done, on day 99, I could hear the sound of engines approaching in the distance. We made it. Wait, we're alive. Right now, if I just turn the wheel, maybe it'll. Ah! Oh, 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 oh my god! Right, everyone, out of your cars. Build a way across. Come on, guys. Build, build, build. Okay, lads, this guy has loads of valuable items, and when he's dead, we'll split up the loot between us. However, this guy's heavily armed, and we should consider him a big threat. We need to approach this with the utmost caution. It's very important you don't step away, you cowards. I'll take him on myself. Do anything stupid. Um. <laughs> hey, you lot. I've got loads of loot in here. I'll be happy to give it to you if you want. It's right through the front door. Don't listen to him. He's trying to trick us. You two, run up those stairs. Fetch me his head. Yes, boss. We got this. I'll race you to the top. You're going to lose. I'm winning. No, you're not. Get him. Charge. Charge. Ah, this is too easy. Come on, lads. Follow me. What is this place? Whoa. Look at this place. Right. This place is pretty big. We have strength in numbers, so we must all stick together. He could be anywhere. Boss, he's right there. Face me, you coward. Wait, stop. Ah, uh, oh god, it hurts. It hurts. He's right there. After him. He's getting away. He went in there. After him. Hurry. Follow him. Oh god, it burns. What is this? Beware bandits or feel Wally's vengeance? Well, that's stupid. He must have gone down these stairs. Hurry. Wait, is that a bo Uh... I don't want to go first. Well, I don't want to go down there. Ah, oh, cowards. Follow me. I don't know about this. Ah! 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 It's a mutant. No! What is this place? Boss, we should turn back. Boss, I'm scared! What on earth is all this? Um, boss, what is that? Um, uh, it's just a stupid llama. Ah! Ah! We need to get out of here. This guy's insane. Ah! No! Hold on, why did all the bandits go? I didn't activate any traps. Wait, but if I didn't activate them, then who did? 
Thank you everybody who subscribed and commented on my last video. I massively appreciate it. You guys are the best. If this video hits 10k likes, I'll make it 200 days. Also, tell me where I should do the next zombie apocalypse in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, you'll probably like this nuclear winter zombie apocalypse I did. Go give it a watch. I'm sure you'll like it. Have an amazing day. Bye bye.